This video is going to show how I go from our suitability map to um, a topographic map with only the best suitability areas showing. Um, I think what I want to do is I want to keep having this this color ramp but just have almost the entire data set be transparent except for maybe 8, 9, and 10. So what I'm going to do is go back to my raster calculator one last time and what I want is I want everywhere where the suitability is greater than 8. So that's going to return a 1 value for all of the places that are better than 8. And I'm going to multiply that times the suitability raster itself. Now that might be kind of confusing, but what I mean to do is everywhere that is not greater than 8, everywhere that's less than 8, it's going to be turned to 0. So the zero is going to kind of blotch out all of the places on my original suitability raster that I don't care about. So instead of having values from zero all the way up through eight, it'll just be zero everywhere, and then eight, 8.5, nine, and 10, and so on, all of the values in between. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to very easily just symbolize the value of zero as transparent so I don't have to figure out how I'm going to get every single value between uh, 0 and 8 to be transparent. I can make them all equal to 0. So if that doesn't make any sense, try to think about it and um, you can run these separately. You could run this one and get your boolean raster first of all of the really really good places and then multiply that in a ne in the separate expression and say really good places where it's just 1 and 0 times the original suitability raster and that overlay is going to do the same thing I just decided to do it all at once so we can talk about that if that doesn't make any sense but I'm going to go ahead and do it and you'll see what I mean tutorial 2 scratch and I'm going to call this suitability underscore 2 save and I'll let that run okay very good so now what I'm gonna do is go back into my new syllabi suitability raster and change that symbology to my suitable habitat I'll get the min and max and load them in classify it I'm gonna hit apply and what's going on here oh <laughs> so it looks like nothing happened but really what's going on is my old suitability raster is still showing <laughs> so I think what I might actually do instead with this one is redistribute these colors right now it's still making um, the 8, 9, 10 almost all the same color so I think I might make my new minimum 8 and see what happens and let's just see how that changes the color scheme there we go that's more informative see now we can distinguish between true tens which are purple nines and 9.5 which are orange and eights which are kind of a yellowish color here I am now back at the VCGI open data and I'm gonna grab a master village town county state boundary file just so I get everything at once I'm also going to grab a roads file and in Vermont they also have E911 and um, also the transportation the kind of VTrans has a roads file I'm going to take VTrans I think they're probably doing pretty good you may have noticed that I'm not leading you through every click um, for unzipping files for deleting or removing kind of layer attributes and things like that I'm kind of hoping as we move on that you'll start to be more independent about that. The one thing I haven't done at all yet is show you how to save um, your your project file. We know that the files that we're working with we could kind of just drag in and drop back and forth as much as we want but if we want to save our symbology and how things look on our map we actually have to go to project and hit save. So I'm going to save my um, QGIS project in my tutorial folder 
and not in either of my data folders, but just here. And I'm going to call this um, finding yellow birch. Save. Very good. So now I've got that saved. I'm going to run through just a quick couple of things about how to symbolize. The first thing I want to do is make a new hypsometric tint. And I've zoomed in because realistically I would probably go visit one friend in Vermont and not drive around the whole state. So I'm going to look at Washington County area, uh, which you'll see in a moment. First thing I'm going to do is grab this digital elevation model and make a new gradient. So that's a single band pseudo color. And I'm going to go back down here, new color ramp, gradient. Vermont has a lot of agriculture down in the valleys, so I might give the valleys a more kind of brown, which for a brown, that's really just a, a, an orange hue that's desaturated and a little darker, has a darker value. So I think I'm going to do that, and I think I'll add some stops as per usual. We'll have a green color, green hue. Maybe we'll pretend this is the you know, the um, deciduous trees as it climbs the mountain. Um, and desaturated a bit. I, I like desaturated colors. I think they're pretty. So we'll do that. Say OK. And this will be at, let's make it at 50%. That's fine. OK. And then let's add, as the elevations go up dramatically, some more colors. I'll add one more stop um, at 75 and make this a more... Um, maybe a more conifer looking color a strong kind of yellowish green that's desaturated a little tiny bit and dark and let's just see what that looks like at 75 Ooh, that looks I think that looks pretty good and then towards the peaks we'll bring it to a maybe a, a light gray or something like that so color 2 is the last one and I'll go let's just go somewhere you know, completely desaturated and grab a light gray and let's just see if that works. I think this could be promising. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to call this Vermont Hypso for hypsometric tint. Say OK. I want the true minimum and maximum for this and um, sometimes, yeah, it, I can choose whether or not I want it to grab the minimum and maximum of, of the entire data set, or if, do I want it just of what I'm actually seeing right now? So I'm going to go current data set. And so I say load, and it has to think about it for a second. There we go. And I'm going to classify that and say apply, and let's take a look at our hypsometric tint. Um, not too pretty, really. I don't think that's that enjoyable. It's not bad, but I kind of want more green out of it. I think what I might do is, um, I wonder if I can just change this one color right here. I think this should be a much stronger green. So I'm going to go there and just boost it up a bit, make it a, li a little stronger. And let's try to try that again and see what it does. Um, you know, it looks gross, but I think that's actually going to be okay because it's, we're going to be using this along with our hillshade and combining the two. So I wanted the, the valleys to look dry, the green mountains to look lush, and then the peaks to be a little stony, even though often they don't have bald peaks. So I think that's pretty good. I'm going to say OK and work with my hill shade now. And my hill shade is very um, raw looking. If I wanted, I could change the tint here. So instead of going from black to white, I could go from you know white being bright to a a kind of darker, um, you know, I could use a dark brown, but I think I'm going to leave it the way it is and just change the transparency of both the hillshade and the DEM. So transparency, let's make this uh, 65 and see what that does. Okay, interesting. I think I'm actually going to make this transparent too because I want the I want the background to sit a little bit in the back. I don't want it to drown out the elements I care about. So I'll make this one transparent as well. Maybe 50. Say OK. And starting to look better. Not too bad. 
Um, I'm going to soften the hill shade um, even more. Properties. I'm going to turn this to 75%. You just have to fuss around a bit, and that's kind of the way cartography works: is you just you play around until you get something you like. And I'll soften this a little tiny bit more too. I'll make this 65. And let's see. It's okay. Um, on top of that, I'm going to put the county boundaries, region, counties, and that went in the middle. I have to put that on top. And I, I think you might know by now I'm, I'm going to make these hollow in the middle. So I go up to here, and under my simple fill, I'll make that um, transparent fill. And I'll make a dotted or a dashed line, maybe, that's white. Um, let's just see what that looks like and make it uh, a little thicker. So that's OK. It's not great. Um, but I think it looks all right for now. And I, I want to show my suitability on top of all this. And the suitability is actually its kind of gross looking, isn't it? Um, I think what I'll do is, hmm. Well, I think the first problem is that there's no visual hierarchy. Um, everything's kind of in this middling, yucky color. So I'm going to actually change the county property boundaries or the county boundaries to be uh, a gray or a black. Let's just make them black. And I'm going to make it just one solid line that's fairly thick and say OK. That's fine. And so it already pops out a little bit more. And I want the suitability. This is too much information. I just want it the best places. Where is it only a score of 10? So I think what I'll do is I'll just say, um, I just want a binary where the suitability 2 equals 10. And I really only want the best of the best. So I'm going to go back and make one of those. call this best birches. Okay. All right, you should get one of these types of binaries. And I'm just going to really quickly go into my symbology and change the value of 0 to completely opa uh, completely transparent and make this red. And shut off. I'm just going to remove my other my other piece of data. Cool. I like that a little bit better. I'm also going to add the towns in there. Okay, things are looking all right. And I'll make both of these semi-transparent so that they fade a little bit. I think that the landscape needs a little bit more variation. So I'm going back to my nlcd image and I'm going to add that and it might seem crazy that I'm going to try to do that because it's so um, strong but if I put that kind of under everything and that still looks a little crazy but I'm going to go and change the transparencies so here's a pretty big leap forward um, I'm, I could tell you every single thing I did, but I think it might be a better exercise to have you tell me what you think I changed. Um, the only thing I didn't include was this road line that I wanted to get. I think it makes it a little too complicated for right now. Um, it's too detailed. So go ahead and take a look at this map. You know, pause it, look at it on your screen, and maybe try to think about what are the things that actually changed.